Hey everyone, Sir Tamron here again, and today I'm bringing you Sir Nasus Bolts of Helia gameplay. I did showcase this deck, or at least one similar to about two months ago, but we're back at it again because one of our viewers, Nitz, actually sent me his list on Twitter the other day because Nitz actually got to 700 LP, top 30 Americas, 700 LP with Nasus Bolts of Helia. So we definitely got to try his list right here and see how it goes. Uh, the general idea with this deck, if you're not familiar with this archetype, is that you kind of get to play the Bolts of Helia and it slowly just kind of kill your units to summon the 5 cards and then that summons the 6 cards, which is going to be your Nasus, that then summons your 7 cards, which is going to be Kindler, bringing your Nasus back, and slowly every time your Bolts of Helia is killing something, your Nasus gets bigger and bigger. So it's very easy to get Nasus to have some crazy stats and level up and kind of go from there so let's see how we pilot this deck compared to nets and see how it goes if you enjoyed today's video make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us we post lor videos every single day enjoy in this match we're gonna get nasa senna so this is gonna be nasa's versus nasa's my only concern is i think that the opponent has a big advantage over us because they do have a lot more removal right we get the Rock Bear Shepherd, we will not get the Bolts of Helia, and that does feel kind of bad. Uh, the Soul Harvests are not... I mean, I guess they're okay, but they're not like, amazing in this matchup. I guess let's just go Sentry, right? Let's let's see let's see if the opponent kills this and let me, lets me draw the Bolts of Helia. We'll go here, try to try to fish for the draw. We'll go Shepherd. We don't need to rush and get in the hibernating rock bear. That crap probably just attacked there for the two damage, but I don't think it's necessary. Quietus or Soul Harvest. If you want to let me draw, I'll take that draw. I'll take that draw. Yeah, see, that's why I take that draw. Here's the problem. I guess I have to go for it. I have no other play, right? I have to just go for the bolts of Helia. I don't. I didn't want to kill that Soul Shepherd. Nah, that's Rockbear Shepherd, but I think that's fine. It does give me a dragon that's gonna be a four four, so that's not the worst thing in the world. If the opponent kills this now, that's fine. I had no other play, right? I think I have no other play there, so I think it makes sense. Let's go ahead and just kill this, just to make sure that we're not. In a position where we're taking too much damage. So then we get we get the cavalry and dragon here. And then next time we'll get the Nasus, right? So next time we start getting the Nasus. Opponent's even gonna give me more value for my Nasus. Sure. I mean I'll take this. I'm giving him the draw, but that's okay. I mean, this is just more triggers. Desert Duel seems really good to me. Desert Duel seems really good to me as a way to try to level up this Nasus. So it's gonna be boom, right? And then the Nasus comes down. Opponent could kill Nasus, technically, I guess, but I mean, it's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna have to be straight up vengeance, right? There's one punish here. If the opponent kills both units, doesn't kill both units. So it just kills the Nasus. We we get another five five. So we're gonna get the. Uh... uh um. Do I want any of this? Probably not, right? Yeah, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the uh the five six. Oh no no, because this dies first. Yeah, the Paging Bakai, there we go. The on Paging Bakai is what we get first. We have Rekindler, but we probably wanna get the second Nasus before we actually get the Rekindler. I have to be careful. I guess I'm putting technically kill this. Sucks that we top deck the Death and the Adam. This is my concern. The opponent just has too many vengeances and stuff like that. Ready to fire. So it's too easy. I 
It's way too easy for the opponent to have answers. I'm gonna press OK. I'm gonna press OK. If opponent has a second Benjus, they're gonna use it on the second Nasus anyways. Right? So they're gonna use it on the second Nasus anyways. I don't think there's any any need to do anything. They haven't used any Benjuses yet, right? A cast decay doesn't really work, right? So maybe we actually go ahead and play the second Rekindler, but the problem with Rekindler is that it's gonna be the unit that dies. So, what if he actually is going to be Rekindler? Let's go Rekindler. We have Desert Duel. If one of these guys levels up, opponent cannot kill two because they have only 11. If one of these two guys levels up, then the Senna will go down to three and we can go Soul Harvest into the Senna. A Cast Decay only kills the followers and that's actually works for me because if, if you can kill this rekindler that's better for me merciless hunter i mean that's fine again I, i'm just trying to if i can level up this nasus and get the the spell shield i think i think i'm in a good spot because we just go so harvest on the Senna. you have one vengeance for one of them that's still not enough Ah, that is enough. That is enough because that keeps that keeps my second Nasus. I, I should have actually put this the other way, by the way. I should have put the other Nasus. I don't think it would have mattered anyways, but that does keep that Nasus from leveling up. But that's not true because we can go like this. So we can go ahead and go for the Desert Duel. I did almost forget about Desert Duel in my hand. The problem again is that because Rekindler is what dies here, it's not like we got another Rekindler from the bottom of our deck. And this Nasus is still vulnerable. Because he has... He's still vulnerable, right? And opponent still hasn't committed Vengeance, by the way. They, they, they committed Triple Senna. So they still have a Vengeance that we don't know about. Which sucks. Uh, we could Haste Spike our Death and the Ada. And that would allow the Nasus to die and come back with our Rekindler. I'm down to do that if the opponent actually removes the spell shield. Otherwise, the Death and the Ara could potentially have lethal by, the, by themselves. So we just go like this and we still keep the spell shield. Hmm. Interesting. As long as this haste spike gets cancelled, I think I'm in a decent spot. As long as that haste spike gets cancelled, I think I'm in a decent spot. No need to do anything for now. We can darkness once the opponent summons another unit. So once the opponent summons another unit, we can darkness. Soul Harvest is in our hand to kill a Senna. Uh, let's just do it because I have nothing else to do. This is 14 damage. This is 14 damage. When it goes glyphs at 2, their Dogo doesn't really do much. The problem is that I don't think that the Desenara are enough to win us the game. Right? I don't think the Death and the Ada will be enough to win us the game. Our Nasus keeps getting bigger and bigger, but it's also getting weaker and weaker by every time that the opponent drags something to it. You try my patience. Unless you have the way to remove this, this doesn't make sense. I guess they have to, right? They have to have the pain. So this is telling me they have another Hay Spike plus Vengeance or something like that? But we still have a good blocker with the Death and the Ada. And once this Death and Ada dies, we can start summoning stuff again. Okay, so there's the Vengeance then. So that's the first Vengeance, because remember, 
They haven't used a single Bengus yet. Everything that they used so far was the Senna spells. Uh, they get to have draw. Their Nasus is getting bigger and bigger. This is this is looking super dicey now. This is looking very dicey now because our hand is useless. Like our hand is literally useless. I guess we can kill second Nasus. Ah, we can kill that too. Yeah, I'm down to kill that too. You're gonna give me the draw, all right? They they decided to also give me the draw. <laughs> they live out one. They're gonna live out one here. Are you kidding me? This is so bad. This is where Soul Harvest gets a little bit risky. Okay, I got another draw at least. All right, Nasus. So the Nasus is gonna bring back a Rekindler. All right. We got another draw. We get the Rekindler back. I think I like just putting these Nasus down. Maybe we actually have to wait for next time to drop the Nasus, to be honest. Because the problem now is that the opponent could actually remove the spell shield next time and kill the Nasus, right? Yeah, we have to wait. We have to wait. We, we got a little bit jumpy with this Nasus. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't work. Right. The Destiny Dad is still on the field. I was like, why is this not, not, not getting the, uh, removed? It's because... It, it kills the highest cost ally, right? So the opponent has to kill this guy. I'm down to let them draw again. I think at this point, between the Soul Harvest, the Vengeance, and everything else in between, if the opponent doesn't get a unit that can actually go over our Nasus, we should be okay. Second Vengeance is a problem. But they have to remove the Spell Shield, so they have to still commit one thing to remove the Spell Shield. I'm always down to self vengeance, my own uh squat this first. Let's just get rid of the blockers. Uh second vengeance, I guess, right? Is the only thing that really stops this. Like that's the only thing that really scares me here. That spell shield is actually huge. Yeah, that spell shield is actually huge, huh? But but you, the problem is that if you don't, I did forget that I can do this. Um, we can kill the Senna. Hear me out. We can just kill the Senna. Do we kill our own the Senna? Uh, do we kill our own Desenata? Opponent just tapped out. Opponent will have to have. We're gonna bench our own Desenata. So that Rekindle, so that the Nasus dies, Rekindle gets summoned, and Nasus is gonna come back with Spell Shield. And opponent's gonna have to have Benjus plus a pain. They don't have access to double Benjus anymore. They haven't really used double Haste Spike. So I'm gonna put them on not having it, right? So the way that they removed that spell she last turn tells me that they do have access to a vengeance. And I think we get there. Super aqua game, right? Having the Desenata just so strong was probably like the Desenata prevented my other Rekindlers from getting summoned. But I think the opponent has a harder time, especially once they tapped out of the double vengeance by playing that three that that, that three one. I knew that I could go ahead and kill my own Desenata. So the Soul Harvest is actually coming to play at the very end by being able to kill their Senna. Who had that? GG's. In this match, we're going against Elites. Uh, we only have one mana negation, right? I think that's that's what's concerning me right now. Hmm. The Soul Harvest can be really good. I think I need to have the early blockers, unfortunately. Okay, so we have a way to remove and keep their board low, but I mean, we didn't get we didn't get the uh, Rockbird Shepherd. 
We could try to predict into it. We still have the Quietus potentially for the. Um, so we can actually go for Sigma Bakai, go Ancient Preparation in turn two, because again, we always want like, we always want Ancient Prep in turn two, not on turn one. Especially if we get the Rock Ray Shepherd here. So we can go Bakai, Ancient Prep. So maybe we get the Rock Ray Shepherd here. We don't. I'm going to skip it. We go Ancient Prep. We have Quietus for the Battlesmith. Double Soul Harvest. Interesting. That's the Rock Shepherd. So we get the Rock Shepherd the second time around. I know that the opponent's not going to block. I guess I should have just opened for two, right? The yeah, there was no reason not to open for two. I mean, I guess if the opponent blocks with the Battlesmith, I'm happy with that. Right? Yeah, they never block with it. Now we just quiet us. Boom. We're chilling. So what's going to happen now is because we got the Rock Hopper on turn three. And we have this getting hit on turn four. It's going to bring down that uh, the having any Rock Bear down one, right? Which is exactly what we're looking for when we had this Rock Bear Shepherd at this time. So we'll go ahead and do here. That's a consideration to take this damage. Because we want to keep these blockers for later on, right? We want to keep these blockers to trade. Because we're going to get this out of the in the field anyways. The downside is that we still don't have Bolts of Helia. Like, imagine if we have Bolts here. If we have Bolts of Helia, we just win the game, right? Because we'll get a Nasus. We have a big blocker. I guess for now, I just use my mana efficiently and just remove their stuff, right? So for now, I'll just use my mana efficiently to just remove their stuff and just go like go like this. He also will slowly start getting the Bakai to be in a position where we can actually, you know, strike with it. All right, it's cool. I'll take both. I'll take both our slave triggers. No regrets. No regrets. I'll take the sleep triggers. If we ever get Nasus, we'll be in a really good spot. Alright. I think now we have to start actually blocking, by the way. Ah, this Wild Negation is so tempting. I think I lose to the champion strength if I don't pick this Wild Negation. It's going to slow down my hand by a lot. It's going to slow down my hand by a lot, but I think we have to pick it. Let the opponent have the form up. Yep, there we go. Let the opponent have the form up. We can still trade with both their units. I guess if I had block, if I had done this block last turn, we could have killed the second one right now. So that's on me. Uh, we could have attack here too. I don't know why I'm not attacking. A Garen here is kind of bad. Yeah, we could have attack here because if the opponent blocks either of these, then our Bakai is in a good spot. Let's just attack now. I think I have a, I have a hunch that the opponent's not gonna block because they wanna go for uh, so <clears throat> they're gonna go for their champion strength, All right? So they're not gonna block because they're gonna go for their champion strength, and it's exactly what we kept what we picked the rat negation by the way, right? So this is literally the reason why we kept that why we kept that rat negation. Yep. Um. Let's go ahead and just play the Bolts of Helia right now. Well, the opponent can pull this too. We'll take seven damage. The problem is that we won't have any units. There is one downside. I did use my... I guess I could have gone Rider Negation into the Rock Ray Shepherd instead of spending my mana and then go for the Bakai. That probably was better, right? That probably was better. I could have Rider Negation into my Shepherd. Why, why pull like that? Why, why keep the Shepherd alive? Yeah, you, you don't keep the Shepherd alive. You pull this two, force me to block with the Shepherd. Okay, well, I guess... Uh, I guess opponent does neither. We're just chilling now. Huh. Kind of confused now. Let's... I guess we got to play around the second champion strength now. We got to play around the cha second champion strength. And we still probably... We don't lose to it, I guess. But the opponent is able to kind of clear up our board. 
All right, cool. I guess they're gonna have champion strength now, and they were just waiting until they had the attack token. There's one problem with that. We have decent blockers. Let's force them to let's force them to act on it. So if they go for the Masia, I'm still in a good spot. That that's still okay. So this is probably the worst way that you can pull this, right? Isn't this literally the worst way that you can pull this? It was better to just go for the Masia at that point. You don't even get your Jarvan leveled up, and now we have the Nasus. All right, I guess we win the game. Yeah, I think removing all their units early was a big deal, right? And again, that prediction on the Latin Negation is exactly what we needed to, to be able to get to a good position. The Nothing happens with the Bolts of Helia here because the Desenata stays. For the Fallen... All right, cool. I guess I'll go ahead and do this for now. By the way, this is still lethal because the opponent doesn't have a fearsome block here unless they have a form up. So this is still lethal here because they don't have a fearsome blocker. So these two these two cards are both attacking as fearsome attackers. And that's 20. So the opponent has to have form up, doesn't have it. I hadn't seen for the falling in a very long time. I, that's why I was confused about the opponent's attack. Uh unfortunately it looks like they had a for the falling pretty late because he cost seven for them. So that's it. I mean we got the bolts of Helia a little bit late, but better than never. And that allows us to be able to get the Nasus on the field. And Nasus levels up really easily against these decks that are relying on board presence. And that's why this deck does well. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Talia Malphite. All right. So, the deck that we showcased yesterday kind of coming back to us. We have the bolts of Helia. The Quietus is not bad. Oh, uh, maybe the one thing I don't want here is actually Nasus. I actually don't mind keeping the Rekindler. It could get me double Nasus on the field. So Harvest could kill Talia, technically. I don't want to play the Ancient Prep just yet. I don't want to play the Ancient Prep just yet. Um, uh, I, let's do this now. Let's do this now. Let's not take this damage. Let's not take this damage. I might need to stall out, right? So I need to actually be in a good position. The Soul Harbors can kill, kill, uh, can still kill the Rock Shepherd for two mana. And we have another one for the potential Talia. Let's go ahead and go the Ancient Prep now. We got our own Rock Shepherd, so that's perfect. Now, if the opponent has their own Shepherd, I don't want to summon mine. I don't think I actually summon mine until the opponent plays their Shepherd. Because I want to kill theirs. I've got gravel cakes and flag fruit. Actually. To, I'm okay, right? This is stopping the opponent from developing another unit. Opponent's not able to develop another unit here. And we get our... our uh, we start getting our Nasus, right? Because if they develop another unit here... Look at this place. That means that they can't copy the that cannot they cannot copy the hibernating rock bear with Talia. So by playing another unit, it forced them to discount this, and now they can't copy it with Talia, right? And again, we still get access here to the hibernating rock bear because the way that it works is that the order of the landmark matters, right? So in the beginning of my turn, this landmark is gonna trigger first, and then the bolts of Helia is gonna trigger second. So here we go. The Grumpy Rock Bear triggers first, and then the Bolts of Helia triggers second, and we get the Nasus. Now, the opponent does get their own Hibernating Rock Bear, which obviously is, is annoying too, but uh, let's just push this damage here. Or if the opponent wants to block with their Rock Bear, I think I'm fine with that. We know that we're going to get the. We know we're going to get a Rekindler here, right? So we know there's going to be a Rekindler that comes down. I don't feel like putting this Ancient Prep because I don't want to have too many things in my board. I need to have a clear board because I want to, like, the ultimate goal is to have double Rekindler, right? So the ultimate goal is to have double Reken uh, double Nasus in the field. So I want to make sure that my board is, like, slightly empty so that I can actually do that, right? Because if I put the Ancient Prep, then I don't have the space to play the double, uh, the double Nasus. So let's go like this for now. 
opponent's digging, I guess. Again, I think I think them not duplicating that hibernating rock bear just completely messed them up, right? Uh, I guess let's just go here. Let's just go here in case that they have Talia. He also both he also makes this up even higher. We have nothing better to do this turn no matter what, right? Gets them get this up to nine. Opponent can play Talia here. And now what's gonna happen is that the Nasus still lives, right? Even if the opponent pulls the Nasus, the Nasus I mean the Nasus will die, but it will trade with the Talia. I stopped the two ancient preps from getting enabled by killing the uh Rockbridge Shepherd. You have to pull this, right? I mean, okay. I guess they don't have to pull this. Who am I to who am I to talk? Alright, so Malphite's not level W. Yet. But the problem is that the Malphite has tough. So the Malphite's not level W yet. But we can go Rekindler into Darkness. So even if the opponent kills one even if the opponent stuns one of these Nasuses, that's fine. We'll go ahead and do this. Just get my guy all the way to eleven. And then we have the darkness to pop the rock hoppers. This will get it to 12, force the opponent to block with Talia. Alright. So now how do you defend this? How do you defend this? You you have you have to have another unit here. And there has to be a fearsome blocker. Because if you don't have another unit that's a fearsome blocker, you just lose to the Nasuses. And there we go. All right. Yeah, they have the Talia, but by playing the uh, the Rock Hopper, they went down on their on their Rock Bear, on their having any Rock Bear, and that allowed them to not copy the Talia. That's something you gotta keep in mind when you're playing Talia Malfa, as explained in just this video. So GG's. In this match, we get against LeBlanc and Ash. The freezes are very annoying, right? I mean, they'll stop my. They'll stop my Nasus from leveling up. I like the Ancient Prep if we get the Rock Bear Shepherd. Okay, so we have two pieces of our combo. If I get the bolt, Bolts of Helia, it's amazing. You want to play this on turn two. So that if you get the Bolts of Helia, you can combo it out. Right? There's one problem, right? This is, this is the one problem, but I have to just take that five. We don't get the Bolts of Helia, huh? We don't get the bolts of Helia, and that's a little bit worrisome. We'll have the blocker, so let's just skip. We'll have the blocker. We have the 2-2 two -two blocker. We have the rock Bay shepherd. So let's just go like this for now. This gave me five fives. Those are not bad. We can get another one here. Wait. Sure? Really? I don't know about that one. I mean, yeah, it slows down the having any rock bear, but I don't know if that's the play that I want to make there. I think that's a little bit too jumping. No bolts of Helia kind of sucks. Trifarian. Um, we're probably always going to block, right? We're always going to block with the clockling. When is just going to go super aggressive. Sure. We're in a good spot here because we'll get both of the hibernating rock bears at once. We can go Cenotype Researcher. So we can go Cenotype Researcher. No, actually, uh, ne next turn, next turn. We'll get the next turn. I miscounted. For some reason, I thought that this was really going to be a one. Um, I'm down to bait out the answer here if the opponent has it. If the opponent plays like a health pot, I'm down to eat that up right now. And by health pot, I meant Elixir of Iron. It's better than having to deal with it next time, I think. That's two reputation, uh, three reputation, so they, they still need one more to hit the reputation. They still need one more to hit the reputation. We have the Vengeance. Okay. Places to go, people to be. There's one problem here, right? We're gonna have to go like this. 
I guess if the opponent has a second Elixir of Iron, they save the LeBlanc. Okay. Spell Shield? That's kind of cute. We can block. Block. Uh, let's trade. Let's just trade. I mean, that's fine. You don't have any 5-drop units now. The problem is this these guys don't really do much right now. Start with the Quietus here first. I want the opponent to summon something so that I can have my page in Bataille. There we go. So now we get to kill the Ash. And this actually survives because it, it goes to 7 HP. So the Ash goes bye-bye. This is a problem. I have two cards. I have two cards. An opponent has two cards as well. So we're both top back in. Nasus here. Okay, Bolts of Helia is enough to get me there. So what we want to do here is that we want to bolt of Helia and have this survive. Third Ash, okay. I think not. So we just gotta have this guy survive and we should be okay. And that would trigger the bolts of Helia stuff. Sure. That's gonna bring me the Nasus, right? So this is gonna bring me the Nasus, and Nasus should be pretty much close to leveling up. If not, it should already be a 10, right? Yeah, it should already be a 10. Here we go. We'll attack. We'll eat up that first freeze. We'll eat up, eat up that first freeze. So Putin doesn't have the freeze, so we just get the spell shield. We have Rekinder in our hand, so we can kill this Ash with the Rampaging Bakai. So we can kill the Ash with the Rampaging Bakai. And that's the third Ash. And I think we get there, right? So it was a top deck war, and we ended up winning the top deck. Oh, okay. Well, they get to kill their Rampaging Bakai. I think I'm still fine, though. We still get Rekindler, right? So we still get double Rekindler here. And then next turn, we get the Death and the Ada, so we can actually just kill the whole board. They can freeze this, but they are still only at 2 out of 5. Additionally... Once we get the second Nasus, the Ash is actually going to be vulnerable to the Soul Harvest. So, and and the, because he doesn't have 5 power, the opponent cannot do anything to actually kill. Like, cannot do, cannot draw with Ambassador or cannot do Bloody Business. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Gwen Bilchwater. Usually, what I've seen is Fizz, right? Um, but the opponent is not playing Fizz. I like the Cenotaph Researcher into Bolts of Helia. How we ended up putting the deck, we really have. It really wants us to predict, right? It really wants us to predict. I'll go ahead and just play the Forsaken Bakai. Okay, Rockbridge Shepherd is even better then. I guess he ends up working out. We can play the Rockbridge Shepherd. We can go ahead and play the Ancient Prep right now because by the time that the Ancient Prep gets triggered, It'll get the bo so this is the this is one of the best combos you can do, ancient prep on turn two right, so you do ancient prep on turn two, into rockbridge shepherd on turn three, and then bolts of healing turn four, and that will already start getting your nasus on the field. Uh, I'm gonna keep the quietus. I think at this point I don't even want my units. I just want to have spells to deal with stuff like that. Unfortunately, your opponent ends up getting the redeem project. I'm not gonna bother um, summoning the forsaken bakai. Because I really wanted to have this Quietus. Like, opponent has to just attack here, right? I I, I just want to have this Quietus. They get, they get some value out of this. But that's fine. Now, they could have Soul Harvest, right? To kill this Rock Bear Shepherd. Uh, well, I guess I, gotta, I guess I gotta deal with at least one of them, huh? They have two of them. But again, the goal here was always just to get this in the field. So this is the combo that I'm talking about, right? We play Rock Bear Shepherd. Unless the opponent has Quietus, it should be okay. This is going to trigger, and it's going to bring this down to 1. Right? So now we play Bolts of Helia. I'm going to attack first. I'm going to attack first. See if the opponent blocks or does whatever. I just want the opponent to tap out of mana. Not like it matters. Then we play Bolts of Helia. And because this is going to be a 1 already... This is going to trigger first, summoning the Grumpy Rock Bear, and then this summons your Nasus. Because the Rump Grumpy Rock Bear is a 5 mana card. So. We will dance. 
So we go here now. Uh, Nasus is going to be a five. Six. It's going to be a six because this is going to die, right? So Nasus should be a six, which is a good enough blocker for us to block everything that the opponent throws at us. Yep, there we go. Uh, unfortunately, the Benjis is not enough right now to kill the Gwen because, I mean, we don't have we don't have the mana for it, right? We don't have the mana for it, so that kind of sucks. I can block with the Clock Lane, block with the Nasus, and be chilling. Like, if the opponent goes like this, I'm just blocking there and block it. Yep, I just go like this. So, Nasus now is going to be pretty high up, huh? I guess let's go ahead and do the Cenotaph research. You never know. Gives me another unit to be able to use as a blocker later on. Uh, the opponent didn't attack with the Paramount because they wanted to have a fearsome blocker. So, this Nasus is now going to be a 9-9. And then we just attack here, right? Good morning. Opponent cannot block any of these units without letting the Nasus level up. And we have Vengeance and we have Desert Duel to follow up with. Yeah, okay, so Nasus is just gonna level up. <laughs> Glimpse, I guess? Now, you wanna deny the level up then? If that's the case, I think I just keep these two cards, right? I, I, I think it, I think it's over, right? We end up getting the perfect curve again. Ancient prep into rock bear is probably the best curve you can, into bolts of helia, right? So ancient prep, rock bear, bolts of helia is the best that you can get because it gets your uh, you're having it in rock bear just to the right position for the bolt to be able to trigger and get your nasus out early. So GG's. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed today's showcase. I can see why Nets did well with this deck. It actually feels legit, especially against like Bando City Swarm, because once you level up that Nasus, it just becomes crazy. You didn't see the you didn't see any matchups against Tristana in this in this video, but before I actually recorded, I was I played like another like 10 games of this deck, and it was just doing so well against this four century type of decks like Tristana. You saw it against elites today. Decks that want to have a board presence that want to attack into you. It allows you to just, once you have that Nasus in the field, just kind of blow them out. If anything, the thing that I'm finding I'm having a lot of issues with is if I go against a control deck. As, because once you go against control, like you saw into that in, in, into that Senna Nasus game, you have to play around those vengeances, you have to play around those removals, etc. So they can actually take care of your Nasus and prevent it from leveling up, which is a problem altogether. Is the deck good? I think it actually is. I think it actually is. And I think, again, Nets is very good proof of that. Getting to 700 LP and top 30 is not an easy feat for, for comparison. I'm not even close to like 400 LP right now. I keep like just losing all my LP in the America server. So it's definitely a big achievement. Now, the list is really a mix of like control, right? It's really just control and kind of just the bolts of healing just kind of summoning your units for you. So you end up having a lot of mana for like vengeances and your soul harvest and your quietus and your hay spike etc etc uh so it's kind of like a story of two decks right so let's first talk about the control tools right quietus hay spike soul harvest one rider negation if you want to count that under control triple vengeance and even the double rampage bakai because you can get to the four slain units pretty quickly all these cards are very very good I just stopping the opponent's game plan and what they want to do to try to beat you. So you want to obviously use this removal when you can. Efficiently, you saw against the elites player, I just removed all the early units right away so that the opponent didn't have anything that they could actually buff to put us into a really bad position, right? So that's kind of what you want to do with these removals. Then you have the second piece of the combo, which is obviously the whole Bolts of Heliot combo. The trick here, if you didn't notice from the games, is that the hibernating rock bear, the grumpy rock bear that you get from this landmark, is a five cost. So when that grumpy rock bear dies, it will summon your Nasus. When it dies to the bolts of Helia, it will summon your Nasus. And then when Nasus dies, it will summon your Rekindler. And then when Rekindler dies, it summons your Death and the Adder, right? So that, that's kind of the whole chain. Um, so that's why the rock bear shepherd is probably one of the most important cards that you have in this, in this deck. Because as you saw, the ideal combo here is that we have. Ancient Prep on turn two, Rock Bear on turn three, and then Bolts of Helia on turn four. That exact curve is gonna get you your Nasus right away by turn five. Because when the if you play the Ancient Preparation on turn two, 
it will trigger once the rock bear shepherd is already on the field, which will allow the rock bear shepherd uh, to count down the having any rock bear by one, so that by the time you play your Vaults of Helia, the rock the having any rock bear triggers first. Summoning the grumpy rock bear, he dies to the bolts of Elia, and then summons your Nasus. Now, your Nasus is still gonna be pretty weak at that point, but he just gets your chain going to really get you to the good spot that you want to be and just put a lot of pressure into the opponent because it's really hard for them to deal with Nasus that early on into the game. So, that would be the first thing I, I, I like in this deck. Otherwise, I mean, you can if, if you can get the rock bear shepherd, you can easily go for a cover and dragon, or you can just play a rampage bakay. bakay after Bolts of Helia, and still be able to go into the Nasus, Rekindler, Desenata chain, if necessary. So, just gonna keep that in mind. Uh, that's also one of the reasons why I'm guessing that Nitz only has one 4 drop, because a lot of times you're always gonna have a four, a 5 drop, where there is the having any Rock Bear, or the Rampage in Bakai, so you don't really need something that dies to summon your Cameron and Dragon. Uh, most of the times, it's better not to. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea, right? I mean, I don't know how much I can really say that you didn't see in the games today. Uh, definitely, you see how big the Nasus can get. So this is going to be your main way that you win most of your games. Just big Nasus and just pushing all this fearsome damage that the opponent has to deal with. Especially because you can get the fearsome blockers away from you. So, yeah. Uh, aside, from Mulligan, aside from that, Mulligan tips, I think, again, depends on the matchup. You saw me keeping Quietus against Elites because I need to deal with that. Uh, it depends on what, you, on what you're facing, right? But most of the times, I'm always mulliganing for Rock Bear Shepherd and Bolts of Helia. These two cards get your whole endgame running. So those are the two cards that I really want to see in my hand. So hard mulligan for those two. But if you are going against aggro or something that's going to put a lot of aggression, then definitely keep some of your removal tools like Quietus or Soul Harvest to kind of protect yourself. So, yeah. I think that's, that's all I can say. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me give you some of the tips that Nitz had when he messaged me on Twitter so that I don't actually forget. So Nitz is saying he has no quicksand. Uh, he thought that he didn't need it because he prefers the haste pipe because it kills anything and it's two triggers for Natsus, which I think it makes sense. Haste pipe ended up being really clutch a lot of situations. Only one right negation because it breaks at anything more than one, but it's needed at times. As you saw, we didn't need it against that elite player. Uh, oftentimes he will keep Camarilla and Dragon versus Aggro because they really cannot answer that one help that that one drain that he has. Because remember, the Camarilla and Dragon, anytime that he kills a unit, he'll drain one for the enemy Nexus. So it's really easy for you to kind of drain a couple of that with this Dragon. Um, let's see, let's see. So yeah, I think that's what, some of the tips that he has. So yeah, I mean, the 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 one two three four curve will predict Hay Spike or two drop into Rock Bear Shepherd into Bolt is so good at the moment. Then there's the Desert Dude that on 5 with Nasus on Rock Bear kills anything relevant. Uh, Cenotaph Researcher is only in there because I don't like 2 dragons, but need another early game unit and wanted something with more than 2 defense. Added bonus of buffing units and summoning them of bolts is cool, uh, but not the reason for it. So just so that you want to know some of the other answers, some of the other decisions that Nitz made here with this deck list. But yeah. That's it for me today. Thank you, Nitz, for giving this recommendation to me. I uh, appreciate it. It was a very fun recording and even gaming session this morning when I was not recording. Hope you all enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Center. We will stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.